Okay, gotcha. Let me just check, make sure we don't have anybody else waiting to get in. Then we can all let you go ahead and start. And I will try not to interrupt you or talk too much unless there are questions. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> go right ahead. I will mute myself and I'll let you go ahead, Brenda. All right. My name is Brenda Smith. Um, I'm more often called Sally the Clown, but today I am Brenda and I am going to be demonstrating face paint, not a clown makeup. The big difference is with clown makeup, it is grease paint. And here, I'll show you a picture. This is uh, grease paint that I wear on, on Sally the Clown, whereas my other costumes are just regular makeup or I have face paint, which is what I put on children because it's uh, Snazaroo is what brand I use and it's FDA approved for the skin and it washes off with soap and water. So it's a water-based uh, face paint, which is what I'll be demonstrating today. And I have my grandchildren to help me out with that. But I'll just very briefly, this is like grease paint clown makeup that you would use if you're doing, and not, not necessarily just clown makeup, but any type of makeup that you'd use for, if you're wanting to have something for adults that you're gonna go out in the rain or you're gonna be out in the hot weather, the face paint is not made for that. It's more made to come off real easy, whereas this, you'll need baby oil or dish soap to get this off. And then you have to powder it. So you'll need powder things. So that's another class doing the clown makeup. But I wanted to just let you know that this is look, face paint is different than theatrical makeup, which you may have someone demonstrate that at another time. So I'm going to ask um, my granddaughter, Evelyn. Evelyn, come on over here. Can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> and Generally, I ask the children what they'd like to be. I do have some different uh, faces that I will be using some of my mannequins to help me with. But Evelyn, I'm going to have you turn around this way for me, please. And what would you like to be? Uh, Mama, Joe, Mama. Can you tell me? Say kitty. 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 She's going to be a kitty cat. So I'm going to do the okay. game. And what, what color kitty would you like to be? Pink. Pink. All right. I mean, we do Sparkles. Some sparkles. She wants some sparkles on that kitty. So with a small child, even though Evelyn is four now, she's not very small, but I like to, with the children, if you have a small child that you're going to face paint, you want to make sure that you, when you're doing the eyes, you want to go down on the eyelid because if you go down on the eyelid like this very softly, they can't open their eyes. So you don't have to worry about it. You don't want to go right this way, but if you press gently down and then brush the paint up, it prevents them to getting it in their eyes. So you just press down and then press up. And that's what I'll do with Evelyn, even though you know, you keep your eyes closed. So I'm still gonna do it. Can you close your eyes, please? So I'm gonna go for the kitty. I'm gonna go down and brush it up. And the big difference between a sponge and a brush is the sponge, you wanna keep fairly dry. It is moist. I'm not done, sweetie. Um, the, it, you want to keep the sponge moist, but not where you squeeze it and drip it out. There, if you squeeze the sponge, there should not be any paint dripping. So you can squeeze it and nothing drips out. Whereas the brush, when you're using the brushes, you want to keep them fairly wet, not drippy wet, but more wet. So that's kind of a key thing if you're doing sponges. Sponges cover the face a lot quicker than the brushes do if you're covering, doing a, a larger area. And I have the paint here is in palettes. It's not a liquid paint. It's a palette paint. So you don't have to worry about the paint dripping on the floor. And I wet it with a mister. So this is a, just a water bottle that you can get. And then you just spray it and you mist, mist the paint that keeps the paint wet without having to rinse your brushes in the water all the time. All right, let's go get this pretty kitty going. I'm gonna have you scoot a little closer to me, sweetheart. Thank you. I know you've been waiting a long time to get your kitty face. Get your 
skating face. And then I turn your head just a little bit this way so they can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the edge and I'm going to go up and then down like this. And down like this. And she's doing so good. <laughs> so I like getting a little massage, isn't it? You get a little nice little massage. You're keeping your eyes closed. So good. All right, so I'm going to go around here. Not too many minutes. Just takes a few minutes. So there is the, what you have started right here. <laughs> and that's very quick to do with you with the sponges. So then I'm going to take my brush and I have lots of different brushes. So you can choose what type. I like to use the pointed brushes for when I'm outlining. So I'm going to dip this in the water just to get it wet. But then as I need it, as it, once I get paint on it, I'll use the mister to mist the paint and get the paint wet rather than putting my brushes in the water. And that keeps my water nice and clean. All right, let's see. So I'm gonna turn your head just a little bit so they can see your pretty face. I'm gonna go start here. I'm gonna go press down. So I'm taking it and I'm pressing and then I'm lifting. So I press and then I lift it and then I go swish, swish, swish. See, there you go. Now the other side. I'm gonna go start here. And it's going to go swish, swish. And sometimes if they're little, instead of going in this way, I'll start from the last swish. We'll start here and then go up. If I feel that they may be a little wiggly, but she's staying pretty still. All right, then a little on the nose. And the kitty's nose can be just a little triangle on the end, or it can be across. So you can kind of go different ways with the kitty's nose. And then I'm just going to go right down here and just press down. So it's the brushes, you tip it just barely and then you press down. There you go. Now the paint has, um, is FDA approved and it has an antibacteria in the paint. So if you use a good paint, then it's safe to use on more than one child. And then I'm going to go and get some little, I'm almost done. I'm almost ready for your sparkles. Would you like pink sparkles? Or do you want this sparkle? Maybe we'll do a little bit. Okay. Close your eyes, please. And I'm just going to give it a little sparkle there. And we'll even put a little of this because I know you like glitter. Now, open your eyes and say, meow, meow. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> you there, you can come a little closer to there and so you can see you're really good. <laughs> say, meow. Meow. <laughs> you right. look great. <laughs> Thank you. And can, I, oh, can I ask yeah. a quick little question, oh, sure. uh, Brenda? I missed it if you said what kind of brushes you used. I use Snazaroo because um, I'm a dealer in Snazaroo, so I get them at a good price since <laughs> so I buy them wholesale. But um, I'm fortunate that I be, I'm able to have a lot of brushes, so I keep different colors for different brushes. If you don't have a lot of brushes, then you might have to rinse them off more sure. often. But I can pretty much keep my water dish almost clean for four hours because oh, wow. I'm always using the mister on my paint versus rinsing your brush in the water. And that really gotcha. helps if, if you have enough brushes. But these are snaps. You can buy, as long as you get a good craft brush that is, um, that the bristles don't come out, they'll, yeah. they'll work. But those are actually Snazzery brand. Okay, and is that the glitter as well? Oh, now the glitter is, no, this is base glitter. And I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, you don't want to use any type of glitter because some glitter is actually made out of glass. So you always okay. want to make sure that you use glitter that is designed i got this um online as as body glitter that is but okay. it's a powder and it's got a teeny tiny okay. hole in here so when you press it it just sprinkles out just like a dust but you can't feel it okay it's like it just it's, it's just a very light dust now sometimes i will take it and open it up and use the end of my brush evelyn can you come back here and let's show me something if I use just the end of my brush, if I want a more of a pow, 
I'll take just the end and then I'll put it where I want it. And it shows up in a specific area with a little bit more of a wow. <laughs> Look at your sparkly nose. <laughs> All right. Thank so, you. You're Thanks very for, welcome. Thanks for answering those questions. Come on over. This is my granddaughter, Lillian, and she is six years old now. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> and she has decided she wants to be Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. So we're going to start with a little... brush here because some of them we do a lot with the brush and some of them we do more with the sponge but this is more brush all right so we're gonna i'm gonna have you turn your head a little bit this way so they can see better And she's going across. So basically the first thing I'm doing is I'm just making like a band across her forehead. And then I'm gonna do the red star. Yeah, she's got a red star right on her forehead. There you go. So now we have the red star and then I can go back and outline around the red star. And go this way. My kitty is meowing. <laughs> the children really enjoy having their faces painted. It puts them into character. <laughs> All right, so there we have this part is done. So I'm going to outline it in a black to make it show up a little bit good, a little bit better. Here we go. And the way I like to do my brush in the paint is I tend to kind of roll it and then when it's in the paint, go back and forth and then roll it that collects it, but it doesn't, it kind of goes around the brush. So I go back and forth and then roll it in the paint. It's hard to see that in the video. And then going around that star. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to give her a little bit of blush on her cheeks. So give you a little bit of color on your cheeks, just to give you a little brightened up. Just a little pink. There, you can turn there. And then we'll put a little bit of color on your eyes. Now, if you close your eyes, please. Thank you. And get right. There you go. And then we'll do red lips 
We're almost done. I'm going to put some glitter on it, though. A little bit of turn your head this way, and I think we're going to put a little spot here. Close your eyes again, please. Good juice some red, and then a little bit of this. And you may open your eyes. Here, I'll show you. I don't think I showed you your kitty, did I? There you go. <laughs> you like it? Yeah. There's your kitty. <laughs> I like it. And then come right over to the right closer so they can see you. <laughs> you look so pretty. Oh, that's all right. There you go. So those are a couple of the <laughs> ideas. And then, <laughs> uh, Lillian, would you hand me this one right there? Or any of them is fine. That one's fine. Oh, you want to hand me? Okay. <laughs> All right. So do you have any questions about the Wonder Woman or the kitty cat? Oh, I lost her, her sound again. Yeah. Okay. 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 Can you Any hear me now? Any questions about those? I'm going to move on to uh, painting uh, a clown, but this will be with the face paint. Um, I have a question from Maria. Okay. Um, and she said, is it important to buy split cakes? I have, let me show you. You go over to mommy. I have some split cakes that I made. And the, the benefit of using these is like the rainbow one is very popular because I can take the rainbow. And go across, you split your sponge in half and then you can go back and forth like this. And then I'll just do it on her head so you can kind of see. <laughs> you can make a color like that. And that would be the split cakes. The other idea is like with the smaller, you could take just a couple of colors. Here's one that I've just got the sunset type colors in it. So if I was doing the sunset, put some water on that. And you could use the whole sponge and go back and forth too. It's just the other one, had, you don't have to squeeze it. So if I'm going to do a sunset, maybe. Then I may want to take the blue. I'm going to take some white. You'll see what it'll turn into in just a moment. It speeds up the process depending on what you're using it for. If you're just going to put a design, if you're just going to put like a stencil, some people like to use stencils, which I do have some stencils. I could do this and then take a stencil and do a stencil and that makes it go a little faster. I've been face painting for about 30 years, so I'm pretty fast without it. But um, this is another option, so I'm going to go ahead and show you a design here. Mannequins are not exactly like um, skin, but it helps, you know, if you need, need something to practice on.
So that's a, an example of using the. Uh, that's really cool. Cake. So now I'll do the clown face for you. Of course, she will not keep her eyes closed. <laughs> So we'll just have to pretend her eyes are closed. And there we go. So first I'll put the white across her, cover her up with white. So as you notice, there's not a lot of streaks. If I was to put, let me just show you for example, let's put a little bit extra water on, make it too watery. So you'll see the difference. See, this is what happens if it's too wet and then it's, you see lines. So there's lines, I don't know if that light's too bright or if it's okay. Is that better? not having it quite so bright so there's a there that one's more streaky whereas if you if your sponge isn't quite so dry i mean so wet then it'll be less streaky so if you find that your painting is streaky then reduce the water okay so that's done and now i'll take my red And with the clowns, you can make a bigger nose, a smaller nose, different size noses. Now, one thing that when you're learning uh, face painting, if you're right-handed and you're, you're wanting them to match, then you'll want to start with the opposite side that you are comfortable with. I'm right-handed, so if I was beginning face painting, I would start with the left side because it's easier to make it match the side that you're less familiar. I mean, mm -hmm. so if you're right-handed, start with the left, and if you're left-handed, start with the right. If you're trying to match them. And I will tell you that kids, as long as it looks like what they were wanting, it doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes you can spend a lot of time just trying to make it perfect and really the kids just want to have fun <laughs> and look like what they're supposed to look like. So I'm going to give a little bit of color on the eyes here. Here's the pink powder. So then I'll go over the eyebrows. And there's lots of different ways. This is more Sally the Clown style. A lot of the kids will want to be my twin. They'll want to look like me. So I ask them if they want to be Sally the Clown or do they want to be something completely different. So this is typically, even though it's face paint, And then you could take some pink blush. This is Snazaroo glitter powder. The cheeks. There you go. Oh, she needs a little wick. <laughs> Well, let's do a, uh, a boy face. Do you have any questions about that? 
No. Okay. You want, Sarah, would you hand me one of those? But you can hand me the guy face, that'd be good. Um, one another face that's really popular with the boys is the Spider-Man face. Now I tell them it's the Spider-Man. I lo it looks like Spider-Man, just to, so you're not going with any um, superheroes. But I've not had a problem face painting Spider-Man look face. I don't write that. If you have posters, like you want to hand me one of the posters, but like my posters that I have on there. I'll have, I'll, I have a lot of posters and it won't say Spider-Man, but it'll have faces that they can choose from. So there's, I have several posters that I use sometimes, but it is a popular face. So I'll show you how to do this one. And if there's a request out there, your friend that's watching, if she has something that she'd like me to do. Now we're gonna pretend his eyes are closed as well. And with the Spider-Man face, it's kind of like the kitty at first. You're going up there, but you're going under the eye versus just on the top. So it's kind of like you're doing the kitty. And then I'll wet my red paint. And the, I'm, I'm using that side of the sponge going up like that versus the round part. So you could use it that way as well. Some, some people like to cut their sponges. So it's just a preference if you like to cut your sponges or keep them whole. Okay, so we're gonna get this covered up here. And sometimes you can just kind of roll in little circles. Kind of go around. Now with the kids wearing masks, the events that I'm doing right now, I'm doing a lot of top faces versus the whole face. But if you're doing your own child, then the full face is always fun. And later on too, there will be times that you'll have a good time to face paint. So there we go. So now all I need is wet my black. It's not letting you. It's Cirque. Sorry. That's all right. I'm gonna go ahead and do the spider web. So I'm gonna just go cross down here and go. And then I'm going down. Okay. Like I said, the mannequins are not exactly the same as the faces. So my lines are not lining up as well as I'd like them to do but on the faces, they will do much better. So then I, for the, this part, it's kind of like a U and you just kind of go round like that. Now, if I was doing this on skin, I would make it a little bit more narrow. It's a little bit wide on the mannequin brush is pressing down a little bit more, especially on that line there. All right, so after I get all of these, get this done and then the last thing I like to do is the eye. Sometimes I'll do the eyes earlier on, but I like to do them last because then it is like the final touch is to go around the, the eyes.
see if you can find the one with the Spider-Man face. But the, that's a red one. All right, so there's the Spider-Man. Now, uh, you can also do, I call it Spider-Girl, which would be pink. See, this one here is pink. So you got the Spider-Man or Spider-Girl. There you go. Do you have any questions on this on the Spider-Man's face? Another one that's really popular with the girls is the butterfly. So I'll show you the butterfly. And again, you can use a split cake. If you wanted to use a split cake for the butterfly, you could do that. I tend to just to sponge it on myself. Uh -huh. Hey, Brenda. Yes. Um, Maria is asking, and this is maybe similar to what you're doing with a fit okay. with a bit with a butterfly. She's asking if you can do a forehead fairy paint, like a fairy. Like a garden type. fairy. Are you flower? talking about just like an eye design, or? Well, let me. What do you, think? Maria? What do you? Find what are you thinking? I call them, sometimes I call them fancy eyes where I do something on the eyes. Now those aren't, these are not the fairies. They're more, there's one uh, that Becky's in. The picture that Becky's in has a, yes, yes. Okay, so this one right here, I call my fancy eyes. And it's, and some people can call that a fairy too. You can put it around the yeah. eyes. Yeah, that's cool. Something that she's I would she like me to do something like that? Yes. She said okay. yes, fancy eyes. <laughs> fancy eyes. <laughs> All right. I can do that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. You're, You're so awesome. awesome. <laughs> so it's kind of like starting with the cat. And there's lots of different ways of doing this, but I tend to go out just like when I'm doing the cat or the Spider-Man. And then because you're doing a, around it, you actually bring it all the way down to the side there. And then you take a smaller brush and you just bring it around and you press and then you kind of curl it around. So I'm going to take it around here. And I'm curling it. So then you can take a little bit bigger brush and I call these teardrops where you're pressing and what you want to do is you want to press. So you're going to press and release. Some people do it the opposite way. So you'll practice both ways and see which one works better for you. Some people like to start at the point and then come out and press. I tend to go from the outside in. So you'll practice to see which way works better for you. And then you can use either a dotter, which is, this is a dotter where you can dot, make big dots or small dots, it's called a dotter wand, where you can go like this. Or you can also use, doesn't work as good with the mannequins, but on skin it works really good. Use the bottom of your paintbrush. So if you take the bottom of your paintbrush and kind of tap it into the paint, then you can do the same thing as the daughter. You just have to dip it in the paint a little bit more, but you could also do dots that way. 
So you can use the end of the brush or you can actually use a sponge. This is a sponge at the end. And the more you press, the bigger the spot, the dots get. So then you want to add a little bit of white to it. So you can either put dot, I mean, and these faces, I call my, my fancy eyes different because I don't do the same on every child. They're different. So their swirls might be a little different. Uh, so they'll be similar. You can put little lights, dots here. You can put some dots, just your imagination. So that could easily be a fairy. You could put um, little flowers on there. If you want like a flower princess, a flower fairy, you could actually turn this into petals, which I can show you. If you double dip your brush, so if you take your brush and you take it and you go into, let's say I'm gonna do the white. So I'm gonna put my brush into the white. So now my brush has white on it. So you take the white and then you dip it in another color, which because this is a liquid paint, it's not gonna turn the whole uh, paint that way. Now it will mess up that one little area that you'll have to take a paper towel and kind of wipe it. But it'll turn a little bit pink. So now the end is pink. And for the flower, all you're doing is you're Pressing So you're just pressing the petals. I'll do it up here so you can see better too. And you can make them small, you can make them larger. So, so you're pressing on there. And then you want to take another color. I think I'll do a. And then add a center. If you outline it, it makes it pop more. And that now this is just a, a just a flower, but you could also do a whole vine. So by adding the outline, that'll make it, let's see if that lights come in. Can you see that okay? But if you want to do like a vine, you can take the green. And actually draw like your fancy eyes, but bring it with the green and come around. And then maybe put some leaves in it. And then add your, you could add your fl little flowers and the larger flowers. So you can add different flowers to that. And then even after you get your flowers around there, you could add some of the little teardrops. And you can put the black and just different colors of flowers by just pressing different, the little, let me show you. The daisy, you can put press, 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 and then just take the yellow. And put the yellow right here. Now you outline that and it'll really show up good. So I hope that helps. And I'll do a butterfly on that one if you want to have that for me. So if you have any more questions, yeah, just holler at the questions and I'll try to answer them for you. That was that was really neat. That was really cool. This is Thank you. This is really awesome, Brenda. Oh, you're very welcome. We're so lucky to have you. <laughs>
So now I'll do the butterfly, which is one of my favorites. I love the butterflies. Girls love the butterflies. So I'm doing kind of up like the kitty, but then I, I like to leave a gap here to separate the wings. Some people will blend the wings together. I personally like to separate them, so it's just a preference. And again, this is the same thing. If you're just starting face painting, it's good to start on the opposite that you're most familiar with. Whatever is the hardest side for you to do, do that one first. So now I've got my wings and then I'd like to add another color. And then when you're blending the colors, you want to kind of blend them in here. So you're going pressing and as again, my sponge isn't really wet. After you do this part, you can kind of very softly blend it into the pink so that they're not two separate colors. It's the pink, then the blue, and then slowly bring in the blue into the pink where it kind of blends it. So you're blending it into the pink. And with a smaller child, your butterfly will be a little bit smaller than this. All right, so then I'm going to outline it. We're pressing and then we're releasing to get it. So you're going down, you kind of light and then you press down and then you release it up. So it's pressing and then release. And also is as you're releasing, if you rotate it, let it slide through your fingers and roll that sometimes that helps too. If you're running out of paint, just kind of roll it as you're, as you're Paint, bringing it up, just roll it. That'll help release some of the paint. And then we do just like the kitty. We're going to go swoosh. Swish. Swish. Like that. And the other side. And then the bottom. All right, so I'm going both sides. And this one. Almost ready for that glitter. Now with the with the body of the butterfly, you have a choice. You can make a little one, you can make dots. So you can kind of be creative with your the body of the butterfly. There's so many different ways of doing it. I tend to just go right down the nose and press and then release it. Most of the time I'll do it that way. Sometimes I'll do the dot, the dot, dot, dots and make it a little bit bigger at this very top. And then the trick is to try to get your antennas really narrow. So you're gonna to try to use just the tip of the brush and you can make your antennas go out or you can make your antennas go in, whichever way you prefer. You're just trying to hold the very tip of the brush so that's not too And then, of course, their glitter. Close your eyes, please. <laughs> there you go. That's awesome.
I would bet that that's really a popular one. It is a popular one. That is a very, very popular one. And I think a lot of people, now that you've showed us kind of some of those techniques, I think people could probably do that on their kiddo for Halloween. Yes. And I mean, it, you have to remember the kids are not looking for perfection. If you're painting sure. your child, they're looking for them to be able to look in the mirror and, and know that it's a cat or it's a dog or it's, right. um, you know, something that's fun. And yeah. you don't have to be perfect. Uh, you just make them smile and you did your job. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. So this is a, another one that the boys like. Do a couple of the boys ones. I call this the bionic face. It's it's metal. I tell them they have to come up with their own story as to how their face got uh, metal all in it. But they like it. It's a little bit on the scarier side. There's several of them that are you know a little bit more scary. And with the metal face, you just put the metal pieces anywhere you want. So I usually tend to do it just on the one side of the face. You got the silver for the metal, or you can use gray. And then have them close their eyes, go over their eyelid. And then outline the pieces of metal. So now you have your metal outline and you can either use a dotter or the end of the brush to make your bolts. So you just put some bolts in the metal. So now you have the bolts in the metal. <laughs> And then the fun part. You add the red. First I go all the way around the metal. And after that, you go around the metal, then you can just kind of let it drip. And they're dripping is just pressing, pressing and releasing up. It works better on the skin, but it's, you get the idea that you're just pressing and then releasing for the blood, blood stripping. This is a popular one with boys. <laughs> they like. And you can do it smaller, you can do it larger. The other one that's popular is the zombie face. I'll just do this side with the zombie. Or the skeleton. It, I usually ask them if they want to be skeleton or if they want to be zombie. And I'll tell you the, the difference. I'll cover this up. Remind, a reminder when you're doing the small children just to press down and then up so they can't open their eyes. I always like to repeat that because that's important. So now we have the white. And you can use a sponge or the brush and go over the eyes, eye socket. And the difference I do with the between the zombie and the skeleton with the zombie, I take 
and I put a line across here for the mouth, it goes across here, and then I do stitches. So that would be the zombie. Of course, then you'll still have your lines. Zombies, I usually put a, a scar. Put a little bit of blood on that scar. Whereas the skeletons, I don't do the... You can even have the blood dripping down. Or you can have stitches. And then, of course, your nose is covered. Whereas the skeleton, the difference with the skeleton is the mouth, instead of having stitches, I actually draw the teeth. So there's now the, the drawn teeth. So there are a couple different choices, and then you can have more cracks just by taking a line, dream, moving it around, and then joining it and just kind of wiggling it and making cracks. So that's a couple of good boy faces. Another one that's really cute, that's one of my favorites to do on little kids. Most of the little kids love Paw Patrol, so I yes. love the puppy dogs. And I'll show you one of my favorite puppy dogs. I, I just love the puppy dogs. My son is four and he loves Paw Patrol. Yep, he, lo we had, he would want, like the puppy dogs then. Yep. And there's different ones. You can do the Dalmatian. This is just a general puppy dog, but you could do a, a Dalmatian where you paint it white and then do the black on the eye and stuff. So again, as you'll see, I don't have a lot of streaks because my sponge is not, where I squeeze it, there's no dripping coming out of it. So I know my sponge is not too wet. If my paint gets a little dry, I'm taking my little water mister, which is just water in here, and just spray it, it's just like a nice mist. And puppy dogs don't always have to be the regular colors. Sometimes they all want a blue puppy dog, like Blue's Clues or something. So I like to ask them, but we'll just do the brown puppy dog here. Okay, so. And then I like to make a little, I take the edge of the, and make a little dip there just for character. I like it. And all puppies look different, so your puppies don't all have to look the same. I'll give them some eyebrows. I like to give it a little eyelash, nice and gentle. I tend to put my finger on, it, it's like it balances my, my brush. So you'll see me put my finger on there. Some people like to hold and you'll practice different ways. You could, some people will put their hand on the child's head for stability. Some people will put it on their chin. So you just kind of practice to keep their from moving and for your, if, but I, when I put my finger on there, it seems like I have more stability and, and not if I, Doing this, it's a little bit more wiggly, but sometimes I want wiggles, depending on what I'm doing. <laughs> and if I'm doing a detail, I may have my hand, my finger on there. So you can practice different ways and see what works best for you. So I'm gonna put my hand finger there and I'm going like that. So those are the eyes. And then for the, the as I did before with the kitty cat, you could do like a little triangle or the go around for the kitty cat, but for the puppy dogs, dogs' noses are covered way more than a kitty. So I go all the way across with the puppy dog because the puppy dog's noses are always more seen than the kitty cat. So that's the big difference with the, a puppy dog and the kitty cat 
is the noses are always painted much larger on the dog than it is on the cat. And then I take my brush and I go right down, give a little press there. And for the fun, fun part, I love the little tongue. Let me just go around here. Make a little line. And you can use the dotter or you can use the very tip and make little freckles. If you're going to do whiskers on the dog, some people like to do the whiskers, some people don't. Do, it depends. Um, if you are, you want to make sure they're really skinny. And you can use white or black. Nice and skinny. And sometimes it's hard to do real skinny ones unless you have a real thin brush that you can do the whiskers in. So there's our little puppy dog. <laughs> I love that. That's so cute. And now the tiger is very similar to the cat, except I add stripes to it. And the cheetah, I can do a half, half tiger, half cheetah, unless there's something else that um, your guests wanted to see or that you'd like to see. I think let's just do one more and one then we're going to be out of time. All right. Any requests? Not this. I, okay. I don't think so. I'll do, I just... tiger. I'll do half tiger, half cheetah, so you can see the difference. Okay. So those Sounds are good. Those popular ones. And you start them both out the same. So you're doing the cat's eyes, pressing down, lifting up. And then you could blend the colors if you want to do a little bit of different yellow and orange both. You could kind of blend them. And the other thing is uh, when I do a cat for a boy and a cat for a girl, I'll show you real quickly. When we get to that point, that the difference that I do with the boys and the girls make one look more feminine, one a little bit more masculine. Okay, so for the for more feminine face, I would go like this, bring it up. And I'll go swish, swish, swish for the for the feminine look. If I'm going to use more masculine, then instead of doing the little swishes like that, which I think is more feminine, I would take it and I do it more pointed. So this is more for the boys. See the difference between the more of a masculine look and more of a feminine look. So those are the two difference. And then with the stripes, if I'm doing, let me go ahead and do the nose. And now for the cheetah, I take this and I come around and do a line there, whereas the tiger, I don't. The tiger, of course, gets the stripes and I'm pressing and releasing. So I'm kind of wiggling. So I'm going like this with the brush. I'm pressing down and then I'm wiggling it as I'm pressing and releasing. So I'm pressing and releasing. This side will be the tiger side. You can also put T 
teeth. If you want your tiger or your animal to be a little bit more vicious, you can add the teeth or you can skip the teeth. So this side I'll put the teeth on. So there's the teeth. You put a little lines here. And then on this side is a cheetah, so I'll give it some spots. And all we need is a little dots for the right by the mouth. And some whiskers. And you can do the whiskers in the black or the white. You just have to try to keep them nice and narrow. And then of course, if you wanted to add something a little bit more scary, if the boys want to be a scary tiger, then you just add a little bit like that. And then that changes the look from a friendly tiger <laughs> to a scary tiger. So there's the cheetah with the masculine side and then a tiger, a wild tiger. <laughs> so any last questions that you have? I don't think so. That was fantastic, Brenda. Great. That well, was just- Thank you for having me. I. I mean, great job. Great job. That was really cool. I'm amazed at what you accomplished in such a short period of time. Oh, well, it you're seems very like welcome. I do yes. more I wasn't talking, but I really enjoyed it. I love it. Well, and practicing. Maria says, Maria says, thank you too. And, um, and did you, uh, I'm going to stop the recording here.